Ralph here for Infinity Tools and Wood Academy. Join us as we make a couple of fun and easy boxes using Infinity's tapered dovetail spline system. This system allows you to decorate and strengthen your projects with perfectly fitted dovetail grooves and splines. I've got the stock for my boxes prepped to a half an inch thick and now I'm ready to rip them to width and cross cut them to length to form the parts for my boxes. This project requires a lot of changing between rip and cross cuts. The Infinity Super General Blade will save some time while providing excellent cuts in both directions. The box sides are ripped to width and cross cut to length. With the sides and ends being different lengths, Microjig's dado stops set the length of the sides and the stop on my miter gauge set the end cuts. I'm going to actually miter the boxes together using a 45 degree chamfer bit. This is much more accurate than using the table saw to cut the angles. But I will rough cut the angles on the table saw to get the best possible results at the router table. The saw is set to 45 and I'll leave an extra 16th for the router bit to clean up. But before we leave the table saw, the parts are grooved to accept the base and lid as needed. Infinity's crosscut sled holds the parts firmly, while the chamfer bit provides a perfectly smooth, clean miter. The box assembly is pretty straightforward. I taped the four sides in line together, applied a little bit of glue to all of the miter joints, then folded the base and or lid into the box, then gently applied clamps, snugging them evenly to ensure that the miters stay in place. The dovetail splines on our boxes are not just decorative. They add a lot of strength, which is important for these boxes that are intended for children. But they're worse than useless if they don't fit properly. The key to a perfect fit, and the secret behind the Infinity Dovetail Spline Jig Set, is a slight taper to both the spline and the socket. The table saw sled and the router table jig are precision manufactured to cut these matching angles. I started by marking a center line on the box and the height of the dovetail I wanted to cut. This marked corner is then placed within the jig to set the bit height. Start with the bit high, then lower it until it meets your mark. Locate the box within the jig so that the center line of your dovetail is aligned with one of the marking notches on the jig. I designed my boxes to take advantage of the one inch dovetail spacing built into this model of the jig, which allowed me to clamp a pair of stop blocks to the jig, locating the box through the four corners that needed to be milled. Actually cutting the dovetails couldn't be simpler. The jig slides across the router table, being controlled by the included guide bushing. You can't really see it, but the guide bushing and the jig are cutting all of these dovetails at a very slight taper to match the splines that we'll cut next. With the first corner of the box cut, it can be repositioned for the next corner. The stop blocks ensure that all the dovetails are in the same location, so actually cutting all the slots goes pretty quickly. Milling the splines starts by setting the saw blade to 14 degrees. I cut a gauge block to ensure that every setup would be exactly the same. One edge of the spline stock is then cut off at the 14 degree angle. The stock is then flipped over and marked so the widest part will be 5 eighths of an inch. This mark is then set to the kerf in the back fence of the jig and then the stop set to the stock. 
The first spline is cut, and the fit checked with the dovetails. Note that because both the dovetail and the spline are tapered, they only fit together in one direction. Now all the splines can be cut, flipping the stock front to back with each cut, ensuring both the proper dovetail angle and taper on each spline. The grain needs to run with the length of the splines, so the spline stock is a cross cut from a wider board. All of the splines are then glued into place on the box, rough trimmed close to the sides, and then smoothed flush. They can, of course, be sanded flush with the box, but I used a sharp block plane to finish them up because it tends to leave a cleaner finish and sharper contrast between the woods. I made two different boxes for this project. A completely sealed cherry box that the lid was then cut off of, using spacers and a clamp to safely make the final cut. The more whimsical pirate chest was made with a separate box and lid. The lid sides were cut and sanded into the familiar pirate chest shape then rabbited to accept slats that would go between, and the edges of these slats needed to be fitted together to avoid gaps. This was done with a flute and bead router bit set. These are sometimes called canoe bits because they make a joint that can glue two parts together at varying angles to one another, allowing them to follow curves and other shapes without any gaps between the mating edges. Once the coopered top is assembled, it only takes a few minutes to plane and sand it smooth. Boxes of virtually any size and description can be improved and strengthened using the Infinity Dovetail Spline System. Find out more by visiting www.infinitytools.com.